Hello, and welcome to Zenith's Video Guide. I think you're going to enjoy our program. It's designed to give you quickly and simply all the information you'll need to help you get the maximum pleasure from your new VCR. To start, note the color-coded chapters on the back of the cassette sleeve. Each chapter has its own color, and that same color also appears as a color bar across the bottom of your screen to help you quickly find a specific chapter for later review. As you start viewing each chapter, the color bar for that chapter will slowly disappear until at the end of that chapter, it's entirely gone. How much of the color bar shows will tell you quickly where you are within a chapter. Now, this video program will show you how to operate your VCR. But we also recommend that you take the time to read this printed operating guide. You'll find additional information in the guide that may not be included in this video program. One other quick point. This video guide is meant to be used with several VCR models. While functions in these models are very similar, where there are differences, we'll indicate them. Well, that's it for the preliminaries. Let's get started. <laughs> Throughout this program, I'll be using this VRD530 model for demonstration purposes. It's a VHS Hi-Fi stereo model, and that's the major difference between it and the VRD230 model. In most other respects, the two are pretty similar. For example, these controls on the VRD530 are virtually identical to these same controls on the VRD230, even though they may be labeled slightly differently. Before we get started, notice the clock. It's flashing because the time needs to be set. We'll do that a little later, but for now, let's at least stop it from flashing. Just press clock adjust once. Press enter twice. And clock adjust once more. Your new Zenith VCR has an automatic power on system. Simply loading the cassette, turns on the deck. To remove a cassette, even with the power off, simply press the eject button, and just like that, out comes the cassette. This fluorescent display panel will give you a variety of information about what your VCR is doing at any given moment. Again, as you can see, the main difference between the two displays is that the VRD230 has no hi-fi display. Your VCR's primary controls are located here. Opening this panel door gives you access to the secondary control group. Many of these controls relate to VHS hi-fi stereo functions on the VRD530 and are therefore not included on the VRD230 model. The remaining controls are virtually identical on both machines, although positions and labels may differ slightly. We'll take a detailed look at these shortly, but for now, the knob should be centered and all switches should be set to the left. On the back are the channel output selector switch, the antenna connections, and the audio and video input-output jacks. Also included is a switched, unswitched AC outlet for auxiliary components such as an amplifier, tape deck, and so forth. Well, so far so good. Now let's find out more about cassette playback. For cassette playback, you can operate your VCR in several ways, manually with the controls on the machine or at a distance with this convenient full function remote control. Now, if you use the remote, be sure that this switch is in the VCR position. In the TV position, this remote will operate many remote controllable Zenith TVs. Your Zenith VCR also has a nifty feature called autoplay. If you insert a cassette that doesn't have the safety tab, the deck will 
automatically go into the play mode and start playing the cassette. Okay, to view a cassette, turn on your TV and tune it to channel three or four, whichever is the unused broadcast channel in your area. In this case, channel three. Then, on the back of your VCR, set the channel output selector switch to match the TV channel you've selected. Once you set this switch, you should never have to set it again. And from now on, this switch position will determine which channel, three or four, you tune your TV to when using the VCR. Now, why don't you sit back, relax, and use the remote control? This TV video button on the remote has the same function as the TV video button on the VCR. When the video light is on, that means you can view a picture from a video cassette or from broadcast TV using the VCR's tuner. When it's off, that means you must use the TV's tuner to select channels and to view a picture independent of the VCR. If you don't get a picture and your TV screen looks like this, just press the TV video button once and you should get a picture immediately. The remote control can perform most VCR functions, including speed search forward, speed search reverse, and pause. To lock the speed search function so you don't have to hold the speed search forward or reverse button down, just press it and release it immediately. To release the speed search lock, press play. By pressing the pause button repeatedly, you can advance the picture. Holding the pause button down for a few seconds locks the picture into this continuous advance mode. To resume normal speed, press play again. By pressing the play button during playback, you can view a tape in double speed playback. To resume normal speed, press play again. When not playing a tape, you can also press the enter recall button to call up computer-like on-screen displays to tell you your VCR's current operating status. Pressing any one of the function keys, such as rewind or channel selection, will also give you on-screen displays for that function. Your new VCR has a feature called Next Function Memory, so it will remember the next function you want after you press rewind. You can use Next Function Memory with play, eject, power, and timer functions. For example, here's how it works with eject. Press rewind and then immediately press eject. This flashing symbol means that the cassette will rewind to the beginning, stop, and eject the cassette automatically. If during playback your picture looks distorted or if the audio sounds strange or is missing, use either the plus or minus electronic tracking control buttons to clear it up. During tape playback, there are several ways you can automatically search for and find a specific segment of the tape. Here's one example. You can go directly to a specific point by using this Go To button. First, insert a cassette. And press Go To. The Go To display will appear here and on the screen. Enter the tape counter number you want and press play. The VCR will rewind the cassette until it senses the beginning of the tape. It will then reset the tape counter to zero and go directly to the number you entered. Playback will begin automatically. Now you're ready for tape playback. Well, that about wraps up this chapter. 
Coming up next, important information about your TV picture. For full enjoyment of your VCR, you obviously need a picture. So, in this chapter, we'll take a brief look at where your TV signal comes from. All of us are accustomed to changing channels on the TV and seeing the channel we selected come up on the screen. That's because your TV has a tuner built in, and it's this tuner that makes it possible for us to receive a TV signal from any available channel in our area. Now, to understand how this works, think of the TV signal as water flowing through a garden hose. The signal flows in here from the antenna and into the back of the TV. Then it flows out again as a picture. Your new VCR also has a tuner built in, so in a way, it's like a TV set, only without the screen. And like the water in a garden hose, the signal flows in here, directly into the back of the VCR. Then it flows out again, directly into the TV. Now, the VCR's tuner works independent of the TV's tuner which means you can change from the TV's tuner to the VCR's tuner or back again anytime you want. Having two independent tuners is why it's possible to record a program on one channel while watching a different program on a second channel. Your VCR can also receive signals directly from a cable TV system or from a special cable TV signal box like this. Now, one of the things all this means is since the VCR's tuner works independent of the TV set, we don't have to have the TV turned on when we record a program. That's one of the great features of having a VCR. Well, now that we know a little bit about where signals can come from, let's go on to the next chapter and find out how to get the ones you want into your VCR. Well, as you can see from the last chapter, with all the TV signal possibilities to choose from, the way you hook everything up is very important. No matter where the signal comes from, sooner or later, it has to go into the back of the VCR. If the end of your antenna cable is like this, screw it into this antenna input jack. Your VCR can now receive everything your TV set's been receiving. On the other hand, the end of your antenna cable may look like this. In that case, you'll need to use the antenna ballum, which was packed in with your VCR. Attach the two antenna leads to it like this, and then slip it on to the antenna end jack. However, the end of your antenna cable may look like this. In that case, you'll need to purchase an antenna mixer and attach it to the twin UHF-VHF antenna leads, like this, and then slip it onto the antenna end jack. The next step is to send signals from your VCR to your TV set. Attach this coaxial cable, which came with your VCR, to your VCR's antenna output jack, and the other end to the TV's antenna input jack. Your VCR is now hooked up to your TV. However, some sets have antenna terminals similar to this. If yours does, use the matching transformer that came with your VCR to attach the cable coming from the VCR to the TV. This will give you either UHF or VHF reception, but not both. If you want both UHF and VHF reception, you'll need to purchase a 300 ohm UHF VHF antenna splitter to attach the cable coming from the VCR to the TV like this. Both your TV set and your VCR should now be able to receive normal broadcast TV signals. If your TV signal comes from a cable TV system, you most likely have a cable that looks like this. If so, Simply screw it into this input jack. Your VCR's tuner is cable compatible, so you should now be able to tune all your previously available cable channels. 
However, many cable TV systems use a special cable box to protect their signals. This complicates the hookup situation a little, but there are several options you can select to suit your particular recording needs. Here's one example of how to hook up a cable box to your VCR. The cable signal coming into your home is first fed into the input jack of the cable box and then fed out the output jack of the cable box and into the antenna input jack on the VCR. Then the VCR output signal is fed to your TV. The advantage to this hookup option is you can record all available cable TV channels, including pay or premium channels, because you're using the tuner in the cable box to make channel selections. The disadvantage is you can't use your VCR to make channel selections. If your cable system protects only certain channels by scrambling the signal, there is another way to hook up your cable box. First, connect the cable TV system's antenna cable to the antenna end jack of your VCR. Next, connect one end of a coaxial cable to the antenna out jack of the VCR and connect the other end to the antenna end jack on the cable box. Then, connect the antenna out jack of the cable box to the antenna input on the TV. The advantage of this hookup option is you get to make most channel selections using the VCR's tuner. The disadvantage is you can view premium or so-called scrambled channels, but you can't record them since unscrambling occurs after the signal has already passed through the VCR. What all this means is when using your VCR with a cable box, you may have to choose between the cable TV company's tuner or the tuner in the VCR. Either way, you can leave your TV set tuned to channel 3, since you won't be using the TV's tuner to make channel selections. Well, you can relax now. Hooking up your VCR is probably the hardest thing for most people to deal with, and you just went through it. So, let's go on to chapter 6. Well, now that we've got everything hooked up, let's take a look at selecting channels. Your VCR's tuner can receive VHF and UHF broadcast TV channels. And if you're a cable subscriber, CA TV channels too. Now, the tuner works the same way in both the VRD530 and the VRD230. Even though the positions and labels of individual switches may be slightly different. With these switches, all set to the left, your VCR is ready for normal broadcast TV reception. However, if you want to record a cable channel, set the band select switch to either CATV for normal cable channels or HRC for HRC channels and set the automatic frequency control or AFC switch to special. If your TV has similar switches, set them to match those on your VCR. Now, make sure that this video indicator light is on to be sure that you're using the VCR's tuner. To select a channel, simply press the channel number you want and enter. You can also press one of the channel scan arrows until the channel you want appears. Or, use your remote control to quickly find a specific channel by pressing the channel number you want. Here's how to quickly scan only your favorite channels. Enter the channel number you want to eliminate. Let's select five and press skip. You'll see PO appear briefly, telling you the channel has been programmed out of the scanning sequence. Now, when you use the scan controls, you'll see only the channels you really want. To restore channel 5 to the scan sequence, simply re-enter the channel number and press Enter. Channel 5 is now back in the scanning sequence. Well, that's how you tune in your channels, so let's find out how to record them.
Before we get into the steps in recording, here's a handy reference chart of video cassette recording and playback times. It'll help you choose the right length cassette for your recording. Okay, let's record a TV program. First, load a cassette and make sure this safety tab is in place or that the hole is covered with a piece of tape. Select the recording speed and use the VCR's tuner controls to tune the channel you want or you can use the remote for channel selection. And finally, make sure this video indicator light is on so you'll know you'll be using the VCR's tuner. Now we're ready to record. Simply press record. This display tells you the VCR has started recording. Here are some reminders to quickly check before you start recording. Let's try recording one channel while we watch a different one. We'll record this channel using the VCR's tuner, just as we did a moment ago. Only now, I'll press TV video again so the light goes out to select the TV's tuner. Now, you can watch whatever channel you select on the TV without affecting your VCR's recording. But that's not the only way your new VCR can record. The record button lets you start a recording with a timed, unattended, automatic shutoff. Here's how. Go through the normal steps to get ready for recording. Then, when you want to record, just select the channel and press the record button twice. Notice the clock display has changed and tells us the VCR will record for 30 minutes before automatic shutoff. Each time the record button is pushed again, we add another 30 minutes, up to four hours. Notice that during recording, when you press pause, this on-screen display appears to remind you the VCR is in the pause mode. To resume recording, press play. Pressing stop terminates recording at any time. Your new VCR also includes an index search feature for use during playback to easily find the beginning of individual recordings on a cassette. Here's how it works. Each time you start a recording from the stop or timer modes, an index mark is inserted automatically at the beginning of that recording. During playback, you can find any one of these index segments using either the remote control or the buttons on the VCR. First, press play. Then, index. And the segment number you want to view. In this case, segment three. And press fast forward. As the index system begins searching, the numbers will count down until the index segment is located. Playback will begin automatically. You might find it helpful to keep a list of your index marks and the recordings for each and use this list to determine the segments you want to find. For example, if you're presently viewing segment number five and you want to view segment number eight, you would press number three. However, in the reverse index search, if you're viewing segment eight and you want to return to selection five, you must enter four because you'll scan past the index at the beginning of the selection you are playing. Well, that wraps up this chapter. So here comes chapter eight. This chapter is all about time. And for once, how to make time work for you. Your new VCR has a 14-day, four-event timer for automatic recording of up to four different programs on different channels at different times. The clock plays an important role in all of this, so let's adjust it to the correct time. Press clock adjust, and when the day starts flashing, select the day. Then press enter, and the hours and minutes will flash. Press the numbers for the correct hour and minutes. Press AM or PM, and then press Enter. And clock adjust again. 
It's just like setting a digital watch. Whatever's flashing indicates the information you need to enter. Now, let's program the first event of the automatic timer. You can use the controls that we just used to adjust the clock here on the VCR. Or you can use the remote from the comfort of your chair to display timer programming steps on your TV screen. However, if you use the remote, you must also use your VCR's tuner. So be sure this video light is on and your TV set is tuned to either channel 3 or 4. Let's take advantage of the on-screen display and use the remote to do the programming steps. First, press the program button to bring up the on-screen display for program number one. Whatever's flashing tells you the next step to program, in this case, first and SU, meaning you're ready to program a specific day during the first week. Pressing the day you want and enter programs this step. Now. Program the time you want the recording to start, a.m. or p.m., and enter it. Next, program the time you want the recording to stop, a.m. or p.m., and enter it. Finally, enter the channel number and tape speed to complete the steps for programming event number one. On the VCR, the same basic programming controls are used that we just used on the remote, except now the programming steps are displayed on the fluorescent display panel. The programming steps are the same, using the VCR or the remote, even though the displays do look a little different. Now, if you want to program additional record times, pressing the program button advances you through the four program events available. Simply repeat these same programming steps for each different event. If you change your mind or notice an error in any of the programmed information, just keep pressing enter until the information you want to change flashes and then use the appropriate button to change it. When you're all through setting the timer, use the program button to sequence past event number four and exit the on-screen programming display. Or Use this button to return the FDP to the normal clock display. With the tape in the VCR, the last step is to turn on the timer by pressing the timer button. The VCR will turn itself off, ready to automatically record each program at the time and day you've set. These numbers tell you how many different events you actually programmed, up to a maximum of four events. Well, that's great, but suppose you want to program a show and it won't be on until next week. Here's how. When the day flashes, press this button. Second will appear. Then choose the day of that week that you want and enter it. You can also program the VCR to record your favorite weekly series each week automatically. Simply enter the information about the show into the timer when the day flashes Press the repeat button and enter. Every week, your VCR will remember to record the same program without having to reprogram the timer. To record your favorite daily series, press daily. Every day of the week will be displayed. Press daily again to remove Sunday and Saturday if desired. Then press enter. The rest of the steps for programming this option are the same as before. Once the timer is set, you can check the start and stop times entered for each event by pressing the program button to sequence through each event and display the information. It's important to note that when the clock and timer are displayed together, normal VCR controls will not work. To make them work again, turn the timer off and press power for normal operation. If the word timer is flashing, it means that something's wrong, such as the cassette safety tab is missing. However, the timer will not flash for certain errors. So here's a list of some common programming errors to try to avoid. If the tape runs out during recording, the VCR will stop and automatically eject the cassette. 
That way, the automatic timer won't accidentally re-record over existing material on your cassette. For additional details about the auto record timer, please consult your VCR's printed operating guide. Well, that about wraps up our show. We hope that you found this video guide useful. It's Zenith's way of helping you enjoy the many features and benefits of your new VCR. If you'd like to tell us your reaction to this video guide, we'd like to hear from you. Please write us at this address.